Hey there, everyone, and welcome to the startup process. You almost probably have heard of Jeff Bezos. Yep, that guy is, as of now, the richest man on the planet and has a net worth of around $182 billion. As we all know, Bezos made most of his wealth through Amazon. I'm ready to bet that even now you've ordered something from there or are about to order something on the site. But how did it all happen? Why did Amazon make it so big? Well, today I'm going to backtrack to the very beginning of this company and let you know how Bezos started it all. How did the company go from a garage to selling 4,000 items per minute and becoming one of the world's largest companies? Let's find out. Jeff Preston Bezos was born on January 12, 1964 in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Soon after his birth, Jeff's mother remarried a Cuban immigrant who worked as an engineer for Exxon. From a very early age, Jeff displayed his talent and expertise in mechanical objects. As a mere toddler, he managed to unscrew his own crib with a screwdriver, and then, as a teen, he developed his own alarm to keep his siblings out of his room. He had it okay by most standards and initially used to live on his family ranch in Texas. For his education, Bezos attended the River Oaks Elementary School in Houston and would spend his summers doing odd jobs around the ranch. For example, fixing the windmill, vaccinating the cattle, and other such farm work. His academic excellence knew no bounds, though, and he was far beyond a simpleton hillbilly. He graduated at the top of his class and secured for himself a place at Princeton. Despite his initial plans to pursue a physics degree, Bezos graduated with two bachelor's degrees in computer science and electrical engineering. There's a lesson for you. Anyways, after graduating, Bezos went to Wall Street, where his first job was with a firm called Fitel. He continued to work in the world of finance with Bankers Trust, a company where he rose to the VP position and later joined the investment firm DE. It's at DE that Bezos would read something that would change his life forever and put the foundation stone for Amazon's eventual birth. While surfing the web, Bezos saw a statistic that stated that the World Wide Web was growing at 2,300% per month. Being the brilliant man that he is, he saw the opportunity of a lifetime and understood the potential prospect of selling various products online. His boss, Shaw, though, tried to keep Bezos at the firm. However, in his own words, Bezos said, If I tried and failed, then it would be okay. But if I didn't try at all, then I would come to regret it all my life. A lesson to be learned here, take healthy risks. Anyways, Bezos quit the firm in 1994 and moved to Seattle to tap into the ever-expanding market that was the Internet. After much consideration and contemplation, Bezos decided to sell products online. But what? With books, the advantage was the wide array of titles available. Another advantage of an online store was the recent court decision not to tax mail-order catalogs in states where they were not physically present. This meant that Bezos was selling products without paying any taxes. Moreover, Seattle was ideal for Bezos' business due to the tremendous pool of high-tech talent. On his way to Seattle, Bezos set up a business plan on his laptop and called his friends and family to invest in his idea. Bezos raised $1 million from his family and friends, enough to set up his business in his garage. Initially, the now household name Amazon was named Kadabra and was incorporated in July 1994. However, Bezos changed the name when his lawyer misheard the word as Cadaver. However, this was not the worst one, so Bezos thought it better to rename the company to something more attractive. Many other names like Ard.com or MakeItSo.com were considered, but in the end, Bezos liked the resonance between the name of the longest river and the largest online bookstore. Jeff and his wife, Mackenzie, set up everything in their house and hurled up 300 people to be beta users for the website. After successful testing, the word was let out. Amazon was now open for business. A bell was placed to ring every time Amazon made a sale. However, the bell did not stay for long as Amazon exploded into the market while selling books in all 50 states, 45 foreign companies, and around $20,000 in sales per week. Bezos was determined to take the company public with an IPO and started recruiting a large number of individuals from all sectors of the market. 
The biggest competition to Amazon was Barnes & Noble, who decided to launch their own website after meeting with Bezos and Joy Covey, the first CFO of Amazon. While the owners of Barnes & Noble were busy setting up their website, Bezos looked for investors and with his record sales, he was able to secure investment while Barnes & Noble filed a lawsuit against Amazon, challenging their claim on being Earth's largest bookstore. The lawsuit only brought more popularity for Amazon, who later changed their inventory to add music and more. The Amazon stock traded below its price initially. However, it later settled to $18 price on the Nasdaq. Amazon reached a market value of $438 million that week, which means that the company experienced a growth of around 900% in annual revenue. Each of the initial investors of Amazon became multimillionaires, and in 1999, Bezos was featured as Time's Person of the Year. The late 1990s saw eBay rise as a potential claimant to the Amazon throne. With the company making profits, eBay was on its way to becoming the unlimited selection store that Bezos always wanted. Bezos offered to collaborate with the eBay owners. However, they were extremely turned off when they saw Amazon's warehouses as they wanted to build a different kind of digital market. Bezos even covertly offered to buy the company, but the talks soon broke down. To compete with eBay, Bezos launched his own version of eBay called Amazon Auction, but the entire project proved to be unfruitful. In 2002, after partnerships with retailers like The Gap, Nordstrom, and others, Amazon added clothes to its selling line. In 2003, A9, a commercial search engine that focused on e-commerce sites. Around the same time, they opened an online sporting goods store. One of the biggest achievements of Amazon has been Amazon Prime, which offered two-day shipping anywhere in the United States for an annual fee of $79. Prime success enabled Amazon to launch in France, Italy, Germany, the UK, Canada, and Japan. Another leap of innovation was the launch of the Amazon Kindle in 2007. The Kindle is believed to be responsible for developing the international electronic book market. The lightweight reading device was an instant hit and helped Amazon secure 95% of the US market of books until the iPad challenged it in 2010. Amazon has gone remarkably since its introduction into the market. Its sales went up from $48.08 billion to $107.01 billion in the span of just four years. By far, Amazon has become the marketplace of today, and as for now, it looks like the company is here to stay. Now for the fun part. Let's discuss the strategies that allowed Amazon to stay ahead of all of its competitors. The biggest secret to Amazon is Jeff Bezos himself. Bezos believes in strategy driven by customer obsession. So, what is customer obsession? In the words of people at Amazon, leaders start with the customers and work backwards. They work vigorously to earn and keep customer trust. Although leaders pay attention to competitors, they obsess over customers. To this day, Amazon has continued to provide its services, keeping in mind these words. Basically, Customer satisfaction and value for money are above everything else at Amazon. For example, Amazon Prime provided so much value to its customers that it was a loss for the company in the short run. However, seeing the value of the deal, more and more people joined in, which raised company profits. So, moving on, Bezos has another important rule, which is to hire quality employees who bring something to the organization and can work in the culture that is set up at Amazon. Finally, the most important rule that Bezos has lived by is throwing away the rule book and looking at things in the long run. If Bezos had listened to the market pundits at the start, we might not have had an Amazon today. Lastly, Amazon was always ready to innovate. The one-click ordering process and the Amazon Kindle were both products of extreme innovation from among Amazon's team. So basically, in conclusion, take a chance satisfy your customers, and play for the long run. That is the basis of Amazon's success today. Not everyone can become Jeff Bezos, but you will never know your true potential until you take your shot and get out of your comfort zone. I hope all of you learned something today. Press the like button if you already haven't done so. Oh, and yeah, click the subscribe button to receive more of our content directly on your YouTube feed. Finally, before you go, hit the bell icon to receive instant updates about our channel. Till then, see ya.